Uh, good morning, everyone. Uh, today we record the uh, video citation class for week three uh, for Math 1 and 2 using Pi. So uh, this will be Jupyter notebook uh, for today's, uh, for this week's class. And this will be presentation. So uh, the outline of the presentation, we will start with the solution of uh, the uh, exercise at the end of week two presentation. So we will then uh, see uh, a number of examples uh, which deal with the fundamental theorem of pi solutions from sections 5.1 and 5.2. And uh, in close with the class, uh, we'll be uh, discussed with uh, an exercise for next week. So uh, first of all, this was the exercise at the end of week two. We'll have uh, to consider f of x, which is square root of one plus two x. And we needed to write a program that calculates the approximating area of the region and the curve of F, where uh, the user is asked to enter the interval endpoints A and B, and the desired number of rectangles using left endpoints. And there is a hint in the question. You may need to use the following commands input, which is very important to use, float, and integer. So we start our class by first uploading the file for week three. And this is the file for week three. And um, we, it's important that to record to recall that you need to import to import the simplified package or an implied package before before we start. So uh, the part one of the solution to the exercise uh, needs to define uh, a variable x and a function f of x and display them. So here, here it is. So we import the simplified as s and t. And from this impact, we import also these following functions, the symbol with the S capital, function with F capital, lambda phi and square root. And you probably already know what is the use of doing this. So for us, X now is a variable using symbol and which takes real value. F is the function of F of X and F is defined as the square root of one plus two X. And you notice here that I didn't need to write SMP dot before square root because I already imported square root from SimPy as a function. Then we'll print f of x equals f, and this is the print we get. In uh, our uh, Jupyter notebook file, this is the implementation you see it in part one. Okay, so just upload the file and execute and should be working fine. So we'll get back to our presentation. Part two, we need we need to lambify f and write the prompt commands that will, will allow the user to enter his values for a, b, and f and make our work interactive. To allow the user to enter these values, we need the input function. We need to use the input function, which takes the input given by, by the user. How does it work? So, uh, to be able to do that, we uh, uh, need to define uh, the values a, b, and n to be able to take what is entered by the to, by the user. So in part two of the uh, Jupyter notebook file, you will see the following commands. So first of all, we lambify f in terms of f of x, in terms of x. So we will redefine f as the lambdification using lambdify function of the square root function one plus two x using the x variable and within the numpy package. Then we'll set our default parameters to zero value. So a equals zero, b equals zero, and n equals zero. And ask the user to enter these values. How we, for instance, Define val to be the value that is entered when we write down input, open brackets. For the user, what he's going to see, enter the value of a. And then the, the user will be required to enter a given value. And this value using the integer function, int, is converted to an integer which is allocated to the variable a. This is repeated for what? For b also. So we display the same message, but we ask him to enter the value of b. And b is the conversion of val 
using the integer function. And the same way, we ask him also to enter the value of n. And this value is converted to also to an integer and allocated to the value of n. And if now once this is done, what happens? We can display the value using print values of a, b, and n. And here our user entered the value two, seven, and ten. Okay. So if you go back to our Jupyter notebook file, this is exactly what's going on. This is our file, and these are the values here. Our user entered the values a, five, and ten. Okay. And the main goal, you probably guessed that now my program can work for any different values of A and B and N, which makes sense. So I'll be able to compute the Riemann sum, whatever happens. And this is exactly the goal of the, the exercise. So in the last part of the exercise, we are ready to get the Riemann sum with the left endpoints, and you may change it to right endpoints, midpoints, whatever. So we first start by defining the x values using the line space function from NumPy, which generates n plus one point from a to b, starting by the initial point, which is at a. Then we define the y values using the f of the x values, and the delta x, which is the width of which one, which uh, the width of each one of these subintervals, b minus a over n. So the Riemann sum using the left hand point is going to be uh, the sum of the y values when you start from the initial point, which is the a, and you start at the one before the last, minus one, multiplied by the delta axis. And then you display just what you get in the Riemann sum using the left end point, and this is what you get with the, with the, the, the values entered by our user, which are 2, 7, 10. And in the uh, Jupyter notebook, Five, our user and entered uh, three, five, and ten. So he got the value five ninety two. There we go. So, uh, so this is for the exercise of uh, last week uh, presentation. Uh, now we continue with the the new part, which is uh, using the fundamental theorem of calculus. And we hear we here in example one have four sub questions. The first one asks us to integrate from 0 to 4 x to the power 5 minus 3 x plus 9 with respect to x. So what we need to learn from this question is how to use the command integrate. And this is written clearly in bold. And where does it come from? Integrate, it comes from SimPy. So we already imported SimPy using the SMT package. We know how to define our variable x using symbol f as a function. And here, our function is x to the power 5 minus 3x plus 9. We display f. And to get the value of the integral, we simply here write smp.integrate f. And here, the second part of uh, the argument is here says that x is from 0 to 4. So in between these brackets, x is the variable of integration. Zero is the lower limit of the integral, four is the upper limit of the integral. And just run it and you get the value of our integral, which is 2084 divided by three. So if you go to the uh, Jupyter notebook file, you get exactly what is there. So that's for question A, solution. That's your goal, okay? So the main goal here, the main purpose is to understand how the integrate uh, function works. Uh, for the question B, we need to change the integral, which is the function to be integrated to secant squared plus sine. Okay, and we need to change the limits of integration from zero to pi over three. So you probably noticed here that the integral for B is from zero to pi over three secant square of x plus sine x. Once you execute this, you will get half or plus root of three. So that's for our second integral, B. For the third integral, which is C, our function is square root of five over X. So we redefine the expression of F as 
is square root of five over x. We display f and we change the limits of integration for x from one to six. So our result is minus two root of five plus two root of 30. Okay, so of course, this become very, very, very easy. Now, the, uh, the uh, fourth and last sub question here uh, allows us to learn a new function, which is the piecewise function. This piecewise function uh, enables us to define a function by an intervals. So in question D, G here is defined to return six when X is between zero and two, X is less than two, should be less than two, or nine minus X cubed when X is between two and four. So we define G as a function of X using the F, the, uh, the uh, capital F function. And we define G also to be a piecewise function of X. And here you see a set of subintervals. So the second argument is for the boundaries on X, when X is greater than zero and X is less than two, that's the end. So it returns six. And here, the second condition is that when X is between two and four, so X is larger than two and X is less than four, this function should return nine minus X cubed. So we first display G and we integrate G from one to four as we did before with the previous examples. So the, for, for the display, this is what you see. That's how our function G displays. So it should return six or nine minus six cubed, depending on the value of X. And this is the value of our index, minus 36. And you guessed that probably you have it also on the, uh, in the, in the, the uh, item file. And this is our sub question D executed. Now, we move on to example two. With example two, we try to learn new things. Here, uh, as part of the fundamental theorem of calculus here, our limits of integration are variables. So we have a lower limit is one minus two X, upper limit is X squared, and the integrand, the function to be integrated is ln of four plus T with respect to T. So what do they want? They want to find the derivative of this function. To find the derivative of this function, what I will do is that I'll do a simple integration first with respect to the t, of course, and substitute with the lower limits and the upper limits, which are functions of x, and then differentiate the result with respect to x. So the new function to learn here is differentiate. Differentiate something with respect to something. Function with respect to a value. So the function to be integrated, to differentiate it here is going to be the result of the integral. So we first define t as a variable, which takes real values. F1, for instance, you may call it as you wish. F1 to be a function of x. And F1 simply is the result of the integral of ln of 4 plus t. When you integrate with respect to t, and they, you get the result using the lower and upper limits, one minus two x and x squared. So what you should get is something like this, two ln of five minus two x, x squared plus four to the power x. This is the result of the integration. Then f11 to me is defined as what? As the derivative of f1 with respect to x using the diff function. And we will use also the function simplify to get uh, a more uniform or acute result for our integration and differentiation. So uh, this is what happens if we uh, execute these commands. I'll go to example two, and five, and this is what we will get for the derivative. Two ln of five minus two x, x squared plus four to the power x. You may wish also to display f1 as a, a transition, as you wish, it's your choice. Okay, now I move to example, um, I think 4.3, which is uh, about integrating trigonometric functions. We have sine of x plus secant squared plus secant tan. So we define a new symbol here, which is C, which is gonna be the concept of integration. We define a new function H, 
which is going to be taking sine of x plus secant squared plus secant times tan. And we'll display h, then we integrate h, and we'll add c. And this is what we'll have. So here, the, this is the display of h, sine x plus tan secant plus secant squared. And this is the result of the integration. Okay? And notice that we obtain here symbolic integration. The execution, of course, is in the, the uh, Jupiter multiple path. There. Example five. Example five here is about amplification. We are given an acceleration function, a of t, which is c squared minus 4t plus 1. We have initial velocity 0 equals 6 for a particle moving along the line during the period of time from t uh, between 0 and n. We'd like to find the velocity at any time t and the distance traveled during the given time, uh, during the given time interval. So we'll define t as the symbol or the variable for us. C is a constant of integration, and A as the acceleration function. So A is a function of T, and V is going to be the velocity. So A is going to be T squared minus 4T plus 1. That's our acceleration function. We'll display it. So that's what happens here, T squared minus 4T plus 1. And V is going to be the result of the integration of the acceleration using the integrate function plus C. We need to add C because we don't know what happens. We'll have to solve an equation to find the correct value of C. And we'll display V. And that's what we get. C plus T cubed over 3 minus 2 T squared plus T. Okay? And this is here in our Jupyter notebook, the first part. Then we'll return to our uh, slides. So what do we want now? We'd like to solve. Uh, we have initial value of the velocity as 0 to be equal to 6. So we we'll solve this equation, c plus 45 equals 6. How do we solve this? Using the solve function from SMT. Okay, so we we'll solve, we we'll substitute uh, t with a 0 in the velocity function. We we'll subtract 6 and we'll solve to c, for c. This way we get the correct value of c and uh, here, in fact, the solution to an equation comes into a list of possible roots. And when we add these brackets, so I'm asking the, for the first entry on the list of solutions. So we get the initial value. Okay, and here, the initial value is going to be, uh, first of all, what am I going to do? I'm going to display the solution, C1. It's going to be 6. Okay, so that's the correct value of the constant and display it and I substituted the velocity function. So C was substituted by C. Okay. Now, if you want to get the distance, what do we need to do? We need to integrate the velocity, the absolute value of the velocity between 0 and 10. And that's what we get. So we need the integral of the absolute value of V, that's the abs with A capital, abs for absolute, of what, of V, 4T between zero and two. And that's what we get. There's a mathematical base. It has an ugly form, but we didn't have a choice. Okay, so we close with this uh, uh, exercise for next week. Probably it's gonna be changed a little bit because this function is not going to integrate, but We'll update you then. We'll see within, uh, with your recitation and structure uh, the, the question you would have to, to solve. Thank you very much for following and keep up with the good work. Thank you very much. Goodbye.